One of the things that I like to do, I like to go on CFBStats.com. I like to dive into the SEC numbers, obviously, because that's what we're talking about, and just see where everybody sits. And when you look on paper at this LSU-Arkansas game, a couple of clear trends develop, a couple of worrying trends, and a couple of key points in terms of where Arkansas can exploit LSU and where vice versa is true, right, where the opposite is true, where LSU can exploit Arkansas. So let's start here. Um, when you look at this Arkansas team, this should come as no surprise given their record and just given how they've played this year. But they are essentially middle of the pack in every statistical category, right? There's a couple exceptions, but for the most part, Arkansas is just a solid SEC football team. And it, it it's kind of odd because it's a little different than the feast or famine nature of LSU this year where if Arkansas is middle of the pack and everything, it seems like offensively, LSU seems to rank above Arkansas pretty much everything, but defensively, they seem to rank below the Hogs consistently. Why this makes me worried is that on paper, it appears that LSU's strength and advantage in this game would be their offense, right? But how much faith do we really have in this offense right now? Sure, if Miles' if Brandon was playing, you feel great about this game, you would easily feel that you are the favorite. But like, I don't know if I like the offense being the crux of LSU's success here, given the fact that we just saw them get completely shut down by Auburn. And when you look at the Arkansas defensive numbers, uh, it speaks to a disciplined Arkansas defense. It speaks to a defense that doesn't give up a ton of big plays. In fact, it's a defense that forces you to sustain drives. So let's talk about this Arkansas defense and where they're strong. Um, by far, their, 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 their best category is pass defense. Uh, they are fifth in the SEC. They only give up 245 yards a game. Um, they easily lead the SEC in interceptions. Of course, a lot of that is because of the six-pick game from Matt Corral. Which, But let's not just dismiss that, right? Because look at how good Matt Corral has been the rest of the season, and then look at what Arkansas, the mistakes, and they forced him to make. And then also recognize outside of the game, they still have seven picks in the year, so they force a ton of of turnovers through the uh, through the air. Now they 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 haven't have to give up big plays as well sometimes. Though this probably has more to do uh, with really who they've played thus far this season. They've allowed 16 touchdowns through the air, which also leads the SEC. But overall, their pass defense is solid. Right? They allow the third worst quarterback rating. Um, and and here's the stat I want to highlight on: they're second in terms of yards per attempt allowed. Okay, I always love yards per attempt. It's, it's a great singular statistic that will measure the overall efficiency of your quarterback. When that ball leaves his hands, are you gaining in chunks? 10 yards per attempt, not completion. 10 yards per attempt is elite. Right now, I think you got Mac Jones leading the country at like 12.4 or something along those lines. Um, Arkansas allows six point something. Uh, they're second in the SEC. And so, like I said, what that tells me is that unlike LSU, this is an Arkansas defense that plays disciplined and forces you to earn it, right? LSU makes some big plays defensively, but then they make everything else easy on the offense. They, they, they don't really force you to earn it. They give you everything that you want. This Arkansas team may not be the best, and you can outskill them, but you're not going to out-scheme them, right? And so they're going to make you have to put together these consistent, methodical drives, and I don't know if I love the LSU offense's ability to do that, if they are going to do that, it's going to start with running the ball. It's just where you're at now. Nothing has really changed in terms of what LSU wants you to do offensively from the South Carolina or the or, or, or the Auburn game, if they're going to have success. They're going to have to run the ball. I think you would want to run it with John Emery, though it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, we asked though that yesterday, and he, he mentioned that Emery was out. Look, Chris Curry was the guy last week. So I, I, we'll see who gets to start there running back. And if there is a place to exploit this Arkansas football team, the one area in which they are kind of not middle of the pack and they are a bit statistically weak, it would be rush defense. 12th in the SEC. Allow 180 yards a game, 4.5 yards per carry. If LSU cannot take advantage of that lax run defense, they will not win this game. Um, and if you can't run the ball and you're forced to throw again, this is an Arkansas defense that will force you into mistakes. They lead the SEC in turnover margin at plus 8 take away the plus six game, right? And they're still plus two. So it's a solid defense, forcing you to make a lot of mistakes. LSU 
Real simple. Must run the ball. If you do, that'll set the freshman quarterbacks up for more success against a good Arkansas pass defense. Now, let's talk about other areas that you can exploit. One, if you're if you if you're looking out there and you're trying to come up with your own predictions, uh, turnovers in area you always focus on obviously. Um, but third down percentage might be right behind, if not even maybe in front of that, when 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 you're trying to judge a team and. Both LSU and Arkansas offensively are terrible on third down. In fact, Arkansas is 11th in the SEC. They only convert 36% of the time. LSU is 12th in the SEC. They only convert 33% of the time, which, by the way, side note, when you look at LSU's red zone touchdown percentage, which leaves a lot to be desired, and you look at LSU's third down percentage, which leaves a ton to be desired, Scott Linehan has to do a better job. Uh, Scott Linehan's best friend may be Bo Pelini in that the Pelini anger is sucking up all, it's it's a vacuum, sucking up all the emotion in the room. Um, You have regressed horribly in those two areas. And granted, those are so intrinsically tied to your level of quarterback play that it makes a bit of sense, but it's still, you just, you, you, there's no excuse. That's that's your portion of the offense, what you're hired to, you have to be better than 33%. Um, Complete tangential side note, Texas A&M, First in the SEC right now is converting on 62% of their third downs. That's unreal. That's absurd. I, I don't know if they'll be able to keep that going, but, I mean, it's a pretty big sample size. They played seven games. It's wild. Now, back to LSU, Arkansas. Um, so if both are bad on third down, then that becomes a key separation point, right? Because whoever manages to be the exception and – outperform what they've done previously and ends up being good on third down will have a very good chance of dictating the pace of this game, dictating the battleground on which this game will be fought. And that's where it unfortunately gets a bit scary for LSU because although offensively they're both bad on third down, defensively it's a different story. LSU's terrible. Arkansas is pretty good. LSU, uh, and this should come as no surprise given the defensive struggles, they're 11th in the SEC. They allow opponents to convert on third down at a 47% clip. So anytime LSU reaches the most important down in the game of football, it's basically a coin flip as to whether or not their opponent gets it. That's really bad. Arkansas, on the other hand, they're fourth in the SEC. So near the top of the leaderboard compared to the bottom for LSU, uh, their opponents convert on just 40%. And this is no sample size or weird statistical quirks. Arkansas is carrying that 40% despite having to deal with double the attempts than LSU has faced. Another weird thing about this game, we'll probably never see this again in our lives, or this is going to be Arkansas's eighth game and LSU's sixth. So, like, I mean, it is it's an Arkansas team that, in terms of volume statistics, has, has played a lot more football than LSU has. And there's nothing fluky about that 40% number. So if LSU wants to win this game, one of the key areas is winning third down, and it's something that they have not done this year, and they have to get right Saturday on the road or you will lose. Uh, I think you got to stop the big plays. Despite playing just five games, LSU is third to last in 20-yard plays allowed, uh, third to last in 30-yard plays allowed, and they're dead last in five games, having given up 11 40-plus yard plays plays so they have been horrible when it comes to big plays this season and if they had played seven games they'd probably be dead last in all three of those categories so obviously this is an Arkansas team where they're not known as being the most explosive so I think that works into LSU favor like if Arkansas is hitting explosive plays on you don't even bring Bo Pelini home at that point because they don't hit explosive plays on anybody Um, And so when it's all said and done, this is kind of my first pass at this game, right? Interestingly, I believe that from a purely statistical standpoint, Arkansas looks better. And I I think they look better in the key areas that will decide this game. However, where this becomes so hard to judge is that ultimately LSU does have talent highs that Arkansas just quite simply does not, right? And those are the guys who are going to have to show up. Uh, who beats Arik Gilbert one-on-one from from Arkansas? Who beats Terrace Marshall one-on-one from Arkansas? For that matter, who beats John Emery? And I don't think anyone does. And so first off, the coaches need to do a better game job of game planning to get the ball to these guys, um, especially Eric Gilbert, I believe. Uh, Terrace Marshall will he'll, he'll, he'll get his, I, I, I almost think, no matter what. Um, and, and then look, again, I know it's cliche, 
But the song remains the same. When you have a young quarterback, look, the O-line will dictate how this game goes. It was good against South Carolina, and you played good. It was horrible against Auburn, and you played horrible. The O-line has to play well here for a couple of reasons. First off, like we said, if you can't run the ball, I don't think anything's going to work. And then secondly, if you want to capitalize on those talent advantages that you have at the skill position, like the only way to get the ball to Eric Gilbert or Terrace Marshall is for that O-line to give T.J. Finley time. And so if you're looking for how LSU wins the game, that's how right there it starts up front. And then it goes to these super talented guys winning their one-on-ones. And if you can give TJ Finley a nice running game to work with, he has proven that he can handle, he can fill in the corners. He can handle the rest. What I don't know is that he can just single-handedly carry you to a win. And if LSU asks him to do that again, I think you're going to be in for a bad time. So there's your LSU Arkansas first pass um coming up next uh we are going to set the stage as we got joel myers coming up going to be talking a little pelicans oh no sorry next we do our uh, nfl weekend preview where we dive into the upcoming slate of this week and kind of talk a little bit about each matchup what we think then we got joel myers coming up at 9 30 this is otb ot stick around otb ot